All right, so thank you everyone for joining us today for the uh, proposal presentation of uh, Jabbar, Abdul Rahman Al Abdul Jabbar. And so, uh, Jabbar, for our earlier discussion, uh, you will have uh, 45 minutes, you know, incorporate any questions that you might have in the, in the way. And then we will have uh, an open uh, floor for uh, discussion by the um, uh, faculty members and uh, students on the call. With that, please take it from here. All right. Uh, thank you, Professor Mohison. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for attending my proposal. Uh, today, I will be presenting my dissertation proposal titled uh, Towards a Holistic and Comparative Analysis of the Free Content Web, Security, Privacy, and Performance. First, let me introduce myself. I am a, B, uh, I am a computer science PhD candidate at UCF, where I started my work in 2019 under the supervision of uh, Professor Mohison. I obtained uh, a master's degree in computer science from the University of Glasgow in 2011, and my bachelor degrees in computer information systems from King Saud University in 2008. Uh, my research interests are in the area of user-centric web security and privacy. I'm also interested in data mining and machine learning applications to vulnerability understanding. The outline of my presentation will be as follows. Uh, first, I will start with the background on the web uh, security analysis and online services types, which are the core of this dissertation. Then I will present the first thrust of my proposal, the online services risk assessment. Uh, after that, I will present the second thrust on analyzing the privacy and security of online users and data. Uh, then I will move to the third thrust on investigating the online privacy policies practices. I will also list the work to be done toward the end of uh, various trust. Uh, finally, I will uh, conclude my work and answer any questions. Uh, before uh, diving into the user security and privacy uh, on online services, let me uh, provide a brief background on web analysis. So analyzing websites enables understanding their security and vulnerability exposure. And given the various uh, features of those websites, the analysis uh, can be divided into several categories, such as the uh, domain level analysis, content level analysis, and third party practices. The uh, domain uh, uh, level includes any features that can, uh, can be extracted using the uh, URL or the IP address. And this may include uh, extracting the top level domain or the domain creation date. Other features such as the uh, hosting infrastructure and location of the host also included in the domain level uh, analysis. Then we have the uh, content level analysis, which may include uh, analyzing the type of content uploaded into the, the website or uh, other uh, certain uh, or other uh, attributes uh, of the malicious hosted content. The, the third one is the third party practices analysis, which include uh, analyzing the third party features, such as the uh, SSL certificate or the privacy policies and information sharing practices. So in terms of uh, web services uh, types, and for the purpose of this uh, dissertation, uh, we will divide the web services into two main categories based on, the, uh, on their uh, prof profit model. The free content websites and the premium websites. We define the uh, free content as, the, uh, as any websites that provide uh, physical or virtual services free of charge. Uh, and some of these websites were run on donation or uh, revenue from advertisement. The uh, other type is the premium group, which contains the websites that provide content using subscription-based or uh, based I, uh, as you use model. To, uh, to understand the rest of this proposal, we, uh, we will provide a high level problem statement around three uh, main uh, uh, research questions. The first is uh, how different are the free content websites from premium ones that provide the same uh, type of content. The second question is, are there any significant differences between the two types of websites in terms of the structure, the content, 
performance or other security problem. The third one, uh, do the free websites come with a hidden cost to users, which would uh, outdate the perceived value of uh, free, uh, free content of the, or the free stuff? Therefore, we formulate our research goal as exploring the potential user privacy and security vulnerabilities among online services. Let's start with the first thrust of this dissertation, the online services risk measurement. And in this thrust, we will study the uh, safety and security of free content websites on the web. Uh, and toward this goal, we will uh, perform several uh, security and performance analysis to assess and measure the risk associated with, the, uh, with those websites. And to start, we perform the uh, analysis across the, uh, the, 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 the dimension that we mentioned earlier. For the domain level analysis, we analyzed three main aspects, the top level domain and the SSL certificates and the domain creation date, which are commonly used in the literature. The second one is the uh, content type or the content level where we analyze several performance features such as the HTTP request and content type. And also for our risk analysis, we examine the maliciousness of websites content such as images uh, and Java scripts. We also performed risk modeling to find the significant differences between the free content and premium websites by building a machine learning algorithm that utilized the domain and content level features to predict the risk associated with those websites. And the objective of this trust is to explore the structural differences between premium and free content websites. Toward this objective, we collected more than 1,500 websites that offer free and premium content. And the, uh, those websites were obtained from the top search uh, results of three search engines, the Google and DuckDuckGo and Bing. We, uh, when selecting the, the website, we considered the most popular ones that provide free or paid content services. We then crawled those websites to obtain their content, including scripts, images, HTML, and other files formats. We then manually examined the, uh, the labeled, uh, we, we then uh, labeled each, each one of these websites to either premium or, or, uh, or free, and then categorized them also manually into five groups based on the uh, content that they, they provide, either to books, games, movies, music, or software. And we found that uh, the average file extracted from premium websites uh, are often way larger than the average files of free content, as shown in the table. After obtaining the URLs and files, we uh, expand the data set with other attributes, including the top level domain information and the, uh, the domain creation date using who is surface. Moreover, we extracted the SSL certificate attributes using ABI void. We then utilized the SolarBands Bingdom ABI to collect other features related to content, including HTTP request, page size, average load time, and the content type. For our risk as analysis, we used two main popular uh, online ABIs, the virus total and security to assess the security risk associated with the free content websites and examine the maliciousness of their, webs uh, of their content. Using VirusTotal, we examined the uh, website's URLs and the files to detect their maliciousness. And we used security to study the vulnerability of those websites and the blacklisting. We then performed the risk modeling by utilizing the domain and content level features to, uh, to, to, to create the risk boundary of these uh, websites and differentiate uh, between them uh, in terms of their risk. So uh, let's, not, let's start now with the results of the website analysis. Uh, here we are trying to show the uh, distribution of free content and premium websites among the top level domains. Overall, we found the .com is the uh, most popular top-level domain with 80% of the premium websites, 
and only 44% of the free content website using .com uh, to, as a top level domain. Uh, however, there are um, uh, 98 other unique top level domains used by the free content compared to only 24 used by the premium websites. We then uh, examined the website's creation date and we found that an, um, an increasing number of the newly created free content websites in, contra uh, in contrast to declining number of the newly created premium domains, especially in the period of 2015 to 2021. And that observation actually uh, motivates us to explore the risk associated with uh, such websites. For our uh, SSL certificate analysis, we found that the free content operators are not renewing their certificates, uh, maybe uh, unwilling to increase their uh, operational costs, which will lead to a potential risk uh, regarding user information and data privacy. The figures show that 36% of the free content websites are having uh, issues with their uh, SSL certificate compared to only 7% of the premium services. In the content level analysis, we found that the number of HTTP requests which are made by a client to access a server resources uh, in premium website is only two times more, whereas the average page size is three times higher. So that means visiting a free content page require more HTTP requests for the same amount of data. And that's mainly results in uh, redirection or advertisement content where uh, each redirection triggers one or more HTTP requests and consumes more time for loading. In the same way, we can see that the uh, average page load time is still comparable across the two groups, which might show the degraded performance and extensive usage of redirection of the free content websites. The second part is the content type analysis where we are trying to understand the distribution of the website components or files, including the images, JavaScript, text, HTML, and other file formats. We found that the images are the most common components followed by the JavaScript. And as the figure shows here that the overall free content websites are having 15% less images, and twice redirect content and 1.3 times more JavaScript. Another issue is the higher usage of redirection in the free content websites. And um, as, the, as the redirection actually is the main method to deliver uh, advertisement or to mislead the uh, filtering uh, algorithms. Next, we will discuss the maliciousness analysis starting with the malicious URLs detection using the VirusTotal API. And we found that 38% of the free content are considered malicious by VirusTotal compared to only 2% uh, of the premium websites. And the free content URLs are detected as malicious ranging from 20% in the box category to 60% in the software category. In contrast to the premium websites having um, a low uh, a detection rate ranging from 1% to 4% only. Uh, a significant number of those detected websites were labeled as malicious and only 9% of them were labeled as phishing websites. While the number from the previous uh, slides of the malicious URLs and premium websites is only uh, 2%, the number of their files labeled as malicious is 17% compared to 45% of the free content websites, uh, which contains malicious uh, files. And from this table, we find that the majority of the malicious files are having .gif or uh, HTML formats. And we, we manually inspected uh, some of those uh, malicious files, the .gif files, and found that the, major, the majority of them are advertisement related content. For our uh, for the website's uh, vulnerability and blacklisting, we used the uh, security API to find that. Um, 
in the free content website, they are having 12% uh, of their websites were detected as containing malware compared to only 1% of the premium counterparts. And the free movies websites have the highest percentage of malware detection with more than 16%. And the free books and music have the highest percentage of vulnerabilities. For the premium websites on the, on, on the, uh, on the right, 17% of the software were labeled as vulnerable. And according to the uh, security reports, the high percentage is, due to the, is because of the uh, outdated framework uh, versions. Before uh, moving to the risk assessment and modeling, we, uh, here, uh, here we are showing the features that we use to, to represent the website, including the uh, SSL certificate features and the page size, load time, top level domain, and the website content features. However, the data, uh, the data that obtained by virus data and security, the ones uh, between the 15 and 22 is held out and only used to, uh, to validate our model. We also included uh, three more features extracted using uh, security trails API, which are the uh, IB address lifetime for each website and whether a website used or, uh, or are you or using the Cloudflare as a content de uh, delivery network? And whether a website is using or previously used the uh, Akami Tech as a content uh, delivery uh, network. So um, one of the main goals of this study is to establish the risk boundaries between risky and risk-free websites. And for this goal, we use the support vector machine to identify the risky website with an accuracy of uh, 86%. We then use the TSNA visualization to, to, to convert the extracted features of those websites from uh, multi-dimensional space into two dimensions, where the red, red dots represent the free content websites and black dots represent the premium content. And uh, we are trying to show the, the, the possibility of uh, differentiating or segregating the free content website from the premium websites. And through our, um, uh, our uh, domain level analysis, we found that free content websites are newer and their growth is uh, increasing. And throughout the, uh, the content level uh, analysis, we found that the free content websites have higher page load time compared to their uh, page size and they have a higher version of redirections as they are the uh, primary methods to deliver uh, advertisement. And to, to assist the risk associated with free content websites, we found that they are more likely to be associated with uh, malicious uh, web activities as 38% uh, of, of them blacklisted and 45 contains malicious uh, scripts. So to conclude the first thrust of this proposal, uh, we have conducted a, a comparative analysis of the online content websites. And by experimenting various domain and content level dimensions uh, and assessing their risk uh, boundary. Um, our findings show that the free content websites are more vulnerable and more likely to contain malicious uh, content or, malici or uh, malicious behavior. Now uh, we will move to the second thrust of this dissertation, the online user and data privacy analysis. And this uh, thrust uh, focuses on the analysis of SSL certificates of the free content websites and st uh, study how they are different from their uh, premium websites. In, 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 uh, in this thrust, we explore the uh, fundamental and structural differences between the free and premium content websites and we focused on the SSL certificate content and information. As it is uh, important to study these uh, certificates uh, since they are uh, having as a, a, a valid uh, certificate will enable uh, secure connections between the client and the server. And obtaining the certificates of the websites can provide us with various uh, pieces of information, which include the domain name, 
the certificate authority and its validity, and also the uh, certificate signature algorithms. The most common issues with SSS certificates are uh, the uh, untrusted SSS certificate, where the certificate is not signed by a trusted authority. Uh, so the website, in this case, publishes a certificate itself signed by the server. The second issue is the domain name mismatch. And this happened when the uh, website's URLs are different from the domain name in the certificate. Then we have the mixed content warning. And this warning is issued with unsecured or malicious uh, or ex exploitable uh, content. Then we have expired uh, SSL certificates, which may result in uh, out of date security practices. So um, these uh, issues uh, motivate us to understand the differences between the free and premium websites in terms of their uh, SSL certificates. And to uh, augment our data, data set, we used, um, we used our previously compiled list of the free content and premium websites to uh, extract various certificate attributes by using uh, ABI void and open SSL command line tool. For our analysis, we started by analyzing the validity of SSL certificates. And we found that the free content websites are up to six times likely to have mismatched domain in their certificates. We also observed that the free content websites are more likely to have expired certificates with a percentage of 24% in comparison with 6% uh, of the premium websites. And uh, overall, we noticed that 12% of the free content website certificates are invalid compared to only uh, three percent of the premium content. I have a very quick question on this slide. Can you go back? Yes, sure. Oops. Why do you use the six X here, but do not use like, you know, four X here or whatever that number is, or uh, oh. four X here? Is there any reason? Uh, just we are trying to show the 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 big the the uh, the high uh, the, the 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 big the large difference. I understand. Between... I understand. But what do you? Yeah. Like, this is something I not really noticed earlier. Why do you use six x here? But here you use the percentage. In the next, like in the first slide, sell mismatch domain, you use six x, which is okay. It's good. And a cell expiration six versus twenty four, which is good. Which is okay. But okay, why yeah, why yeah. why there is inconsistency in that? Oh yeah, I, I got your question. Actually, yeah, okay, never mind. Is... Just carry on, but just uh, right. uh, for consistency. Okay, carry on. Oh yeah, sure, please. So uh, next, we will analyze the number of uh, of days uh, left until the SSL certificate become in invalid if not uh, renewed. And uh, as as shown in these figures, the average validity uh, duration in the premium website is uh, much much higher than the uh, free content website especially in the uh, games, movies, and software categories, uh, which result in the increase in the uh, overall average. On the issuer organize, organization level, we, uh, we uncover uh, the heavy usage of Cloudflare services by the free content websites for their certificates in comparison to uh, only 16% of the premium uh, websites. And moreover, while the uh, DigiCert is not commonly used for free content, around 23% uh, uh, of the premium websites rely on, the, on them uh, for issuing the SSL certificates. And to show the uh, exact differences in percentage between the certificate issuer organization of the free and premium uh, websites, the table here shows that Cloudflare and Let's Encrypt are used more by the free content and the DigiCert is used by the premium uh, websites. While there are um, uh, 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 noticeable differences between the free and premium content websites on the organizational level, uh, we found that on the country level, the differences are not uh, as significant as most of these uh, websites uh, or the uh, content, uh, the CDNs are located in the United States. So, uh, we we have the, uh, the we have them in both categories as the highest percentage. 
And uh, now we move to the to the uh, to studying the signature algorithms used by um, those uh, these websites. And we we found that 60% of the free content are using uh, SHA 256 with RSA signature mechanism uh, by following the hash then sign mechanism. And the majority of the premium websites are using the same uh, algorithms combination with a difference of uh, 23%. Uh, On the other hand, 38% um, of the free content websites uh, rely on the newer and faster ECDSA algorithm, which uses the shorter keys for the same security level as in the uh, RSA, in comparison with less than 17% of the premium websites. In, um, in addition to analyzing the key algorithms, we also investigated the commonly used key, uh, key size among the SSL certificates. And overall, we noticed that more than a third of the free content websites are still using the 256 um, uh, bits keys, uh, key in, in comparison with only 20% uh, of the premium content. As the uh, key size, uh, uh, as they use the uh, key size of 2,048 uh, uh, bits uh, is, is commonly used among the um, bre uh, premium uh, content websites. And, and, uh, and this is more common in the games and movies and software categories. So uh, analyzing the free and premium content websites on the uh, SSL certificates, we, uh, we, we, we found that free content websites are more likely to have issues with their certificates, while on the issuing organization and country are similar for both um, websites. We, we noticed that the free content websites are adapting the more recent ECDSA algorithm with third of them using the key size of 256 bits. And to summarize this uh, th uh, thrust so far, uh, we found that 36% of the free content websites are having uh, issues with their certificates, uh, which uh, recalls for uh, consistent monitoring of, of, of such uh, websites. And up to, uh, uh, and up to the, the, this, uh, this, uh, this point in this dissertation, we highlighted that free content websites are more likely to be associated with malicious content uh, and activities with a large portion of them having invalid certificates. To uh, extend uh, uh, this work, we will uh, analyze the HTTP header features to investigate the uh, infrastructure and behavioral differences between the free and premium websites as the um, HTTP headers uh, or the HTTP header features can uh, can include the security related features such as the strict transport security, set cookies, and other attributes um, as the connection status uh, code or the server type. We also, uh, so uh, in actually in in including the HTTP header features in our analysis will result in uh, a more accurate uh, risk assessment. And that will enable the uh, detection of malicious uh, website using easy to extract features. Now we will move to the third thrust of, uh, of this dissertation, the uh, online services privacy practices analysis. So um, privacy uh, policies are the, the, the uh, are legal statements and they are the primary channel where the uh, service provider inform uh, users about their data collection and use practices. And typically the, the uh, data practices are embedded within the privacy policies or the term, uh, terms of use, which reflect the uh, service provider behavior and security concerns uh, associated with, uh, with the usage of, uh, of, of that uh, service. So in, in, in this work, we are uh, trying to study the data collection and sharing practices among the uh, free and premium websites and trying to find the main uh, differences between the privacy policies 
in the two uh, groups. So, uh, so just to uh, just as a, as an introduction and as uh, online, uh, so just to follow the same uh, categories that uh, have been uh, proposed by the in the literature, we. Uh, we start we start by the by categorizing uh, the privacy policies into uh, nine different categories or the paragraphs actually in the privacy policies the first group is the first party collection uh, which is about what uh, what data is being collected by a, a service provider then we have the third party sharing which discusses uh, what data is collected and shared with uh, a third party uh, then we have the uh, user choice, which is about uh, whether users uh, have control over their uh, data. We also have the user access, um, and uh, it discusses uh, how how users can access or edit or delete their their data, and if if the service will allow them to do to do so. Then we have the uh, data retention uh, category which is about the how long the stored uh, data or the uh, uh, how how long this server this the surface uh, provider servers will will retain or store the uh, the users uh, the data of the of the users then we have the data uh, security which is the uh, which dis discuss or describe the method of securing uh, the uh, or protecting user data from different types of uh, breaches we then have the uh, uh, policy change uh, which describe how a service provider inform uh, uh, the users about any changes in their uh, uh, policies next we have the uh, do not track category which describe how a service provider honors the uh, online and add tracking we have the uh, specific uh, audience uh, and that will like if, if we have a paragraph uh, targeting a specific or dis discussing a, a specific group of users, for example, uh, children, Europeans, or um, or California residents, as an example. Then we have the other category, which contains the the the, the other uh, types or the one that does not uh, relate to any categories and just includes uh, the uh, general uh, information not related to any of the uh, previously discussed uh, categories and so uh, and use we use the uh, uh, these high level categories as labels the, uh, to implement uh, an, an automated uh, automated annotator we call it uh, tldr uh, so we use that in or we can get annotator or classifier to extract the uh, reporting practices of the free and premium uh, online services by analyzing their privacy policies. So be, uh, before discussing or before moving to the proposed uh, model or the annotator, uh, and to understand the privacy policy reporting of the uh, free and premium content, uh, we extract. We actually we, we started by extracting the privacy policies of the aforementioned uh, compiled uh, websites, and we uh, we also we after extracting the privacy policies, we manually verified the validity of uh, of each uh, extracted policy, uh, so we can have uh, accurate reporting for the observations and uh, our findings. And. Um, so in, 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 in order to build our privacy policy pipeline, we started with um, the following uh, steps. The first one is uh, crawling the compiled online websites and uh, extracting their privacy policies. And for our, uh, uh, for our uh, crawling, we used uh, the uh, Selenium driver, which is an uh, automated framework that provides extensions to uh, to simulate or to, to emulate the user inter interaction with uh, browsers, and so the uh, Selenium driver will search uh, each web page of the of each website for terms uh, such as privacy policy or privacy statements um, or other uh, privacy related terms. And once the any of these terms found, the associated uh, or the related HTML will be saved, uh, so we can use it for 
the next uh, uh, processing step. So then uh, after downloading and saving the uh, privacy policies, we, uh, we, uh, we perform the, uh, the cleaning step or the segment extraction, where for, uh, uh, for each uh, privacy policy, we, uh, we extracted the segments and or the paragraphs and we use the uh, beautiful soap the beautiful soap python uh, library after after that the uh, the tldr or the annotator that we used uh, take place by classifying the uh, uh, classifying or uh, associating each paragraph to one or more privacy categories from the the categories that we discussed before so in the next slide, we'll discuss the pipeline design of the uh, TLDR annotator. So for, for our pipeline and after experimenting uh, several uh, configurations um, and from our uh, exper uh, experimental evaluation, we, uh, we just demonstrate the capabilities of, uh, of PERT uh, transformer as we will show later uh, on this uh, presentation. So the 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 uh, the BERT model actually is uh, also uh, combined with the word base for word representation, and then uh, we use the model for uh, uh, segment level uh, annotation or for paragraph annotation. So the so the 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 BERT the BERT model or the annotator uh, will output a binary decision for each segment or for each uh, paragraph. Uh, um, to be to be uh, to to check if if it's related to any of the previously discussed categories, and this uh, binary will be as a, a positive or negative. The uh, the positive outcome uh, will indicate that the segment contains information about the uh, privacy policy category, and while the um, negative outcome will indicate that the segment does not contain such uh, information. So in our experimental uh, setup, um, we trained the proposed pipeline using um, OBB115 dataset, uh, which is a, com a compilation of uh, 115 uh, privacy policies uh, manually uh, annotated by 10 uh, law school students. We used the, um, we used the document level splitting approach, which um, when, we, uh, we, when we trained the the model by using 80% of the privacy policies themselves as a test against uh, the remaining um, the remaining 20% uh, used for uh, sorry we used uh, we we used the document level splitting approach by training the model using the 80% of the documents or the privacy policies and then we did perform the testing uh, on the remaining 20 20%. Uh, then for, uh, for our evaluation, we use the F1 score, uh, which is the uh, har harmonic me mean between the, uh, of the uh, precision uh, and recall. We use uh, the F1 score as our uh, evaluation metrics. So after discussing our uh, pipeline structure, we are uh, showing here the performance of our proposed classifier. Um, and this um, all reported in F1 score. And, and we are showing here the best performing word representation the, uh, by using the word base and the learning algorithms using the BERT uh, uh, transformer. So our evaluation shows that uh, the TLDR outperforms its uh, counterpart by a large margin with a 91 uh, overall F1 score. And the highest difference is in the data uh, retention category with uh, 87 uh, F1 score, if when we if we compare with uh, other uh, uh, models that use uh, that trend on the same uh, dataset. So then we use the uh, the implemented uh, annotator to study the privacy practices uh, reporting and uh, for both the free and premium content websites, and the table here shows that uh, the percentage of websites containing information regarding each uh, privacy policy category. So, uh, in, uh, so the, the, the finding here shows that uh, in general, uh, premium websites are more likely to, uh, to report their uh, data collection and sharing practices 
despite the fact that free content websites having uh, longer uh, privacy policies. And moreover, we noticed that free content paragraphs are less likely to contain uh, uh, useful information regarding the data collection practices, as the table uh, here shows that um, the percentage of uh, segments highlighted by the uh, TLDR annotator for containing information uh, of uh, a category of interest. And when we look at the uh, last row of the table, that the uh, all categories, we can see that in, in, in all of our five groups, the premium websites contain higher percentage of the highlighted segments or the uh, segments that include useful information. And this will indicate that the premium websites are more to the point, while the ambiguity rules the free content websites in particular for the uh, first party uh, use category. In addition, we explore. We also explore the privacy policy similarity among our data set using the uh, TIF, uh, TFIDF and cosine similarity. We extracted the similarity per sentence among the privacy policies. And we noticed that free content websites are more likely to have similar uh, privacy policies, indicating um, a potential usage of uh, generic templates among those uh, websites. So, uh, so uh, the findings from this uh, thrust, among the uh, other uh, in the uh, other findings in the in this dissertation, we 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 can show that uh, premium sites are more transparent and to the point in reporting their data sharing and user uh, tracking practices. Um, moreover, the lack of transparency in free content websites. Are, are concerning, for example, 0% uh, actually from the gaming free content websites reported their uh, user tracking practices. In contrast to the, uh, the premium uh, content free, uh, the free uh, yeah, sorry, the, 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 free, the free websites contain uh, less, uh, less information or less useful information, uh, useful information uh, trying to hide um, some uh, potential risk of using their uh, services. Uh, so among also among other findings, we uncovered that free content are more likely to use uh, generic privacy policy templates. And this uh, in indicates that the privacy policy may reflect the actual data collection practices used by the website service providers. So, so to summarize this thrust so far, we study the free and premium content uh, websites reporting uh, uh, practices by uncovering the lack of uh, of, uh, of reporting uh, uh, for their data uh, data collection in the free co uh, content. In addition to uh, reusing general templates, which uh, calls for uh, further uh, investigation. And to extend uh, this work, we will investigate the uh, commonly used uh, data collection and privacy practice among other uh, or among uh, popular websites, uh, namely the um, Alexa top 10,000 websites and how the general practices compared uh, to their free and premium content uh, websites. Uh, uh, and to do so, we will, uh, we will use the uh, implemented model that TLDR uh, toward analyzing Alexa top 10,000 uh, privacy policies. This will allow us for, uh, to uncover the privacy uh, uh, policy reporting differences between Alexa top 10,000 websites and the two groups uh, of free and premium content websites. So the, uh, the ultimate goal of this study is to provide a, a better understanding of the uh, trade-offs between the provided service and the privacy of, of users. With that, uh, I conclude uh, my, my presentation. And here is uh, the list of the publication that contributed to my proposal. Thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions.